Welcome back to another quick video. Today, let's discuss feeding your battery cable through your firewall with Radlock connectors. All right, let's dig in. Uh, the Radlock series of connectors is an Amphenol product and uh, really kind of a trick little setup. We've uh, put them together in kits, uh, two different types. We actually bring the parts in, modify a couple small things so they work well for um, you know, feeding battery cables through a firewall in a simple way. Uh, we have the Type A and the Type B. So Type A on one side has something that you're fairly familiar with, a threaded stud with a crimp, crimp type um, battery cable lug, and the quick release Radlock on the other side. Uh, if you take a look here, uh, they're kind of neat. They, the way they work is they have a quick release button and it comes apart when you push the button and pull it apart. So take a look on the inside. It, for lack of a better term, it looks like it's kind of rifled inside there. And then you have the button that you push. And that's what releases it from the little groove that you see machined into this stud. So it creates a good contact. Um, this also, on each side, you can hear the click when it goes back together, both crimp style uh, connections, uh, any, any standard way of crimping battery um, cables, uh, it seems to work pretty well for crimping uh, these connectors as well, and we'll go into that a little bit more. Type B is basically the same thing. Again, both come with stainless fasteners and a template to uh, get all your holes lined up and, and punched into your firewall. And this one is simply a Radlock to Radlock. So the same type of connection on each side. So just depending on what your uh, application is, um, you know, you have two, two different options here. Here's a quick diagram explaining kit type A or kit type B. One benefit of the type A is that it does have a threaded stud, so you can use that as a junction stud. Okay, let's jump into the different cable sizes that can be used with these kits and the options you have. From left to right, we've got a four gauge, a two gauge, a zero gauge, often written as one slash zero or called one aught, and a double zero, often written as two slash zero or two aught. Most people probably watching this will be using a four or two gauge. Um, the guy who generally uses a sledgehammer when a 15 ounce hammer would be sufficient. We'll end up using like a zero or a double lock gauge or in some applications when you have a lot of power running through a car, um, you may need a, a larger cable size. Um, in order to crimp these, you wanna make sure you have kind of an inspection hole right there. That little inspection hole you can see. You wanna make sure that when you strip the wire you strip enough to where you can see that the copper strands through that hole and you leave a little gap there and then proceed to crimp. Quick diagram here showing the different cable gauges and the current ratings as well as the color options orange, black, and red. In a previous video you may have noticed that I strip the shielding or the insulation off of a wire using just a simple utility knife and a razor blade. And uh, that works well, just make sure you don't get into the wires, into the copper strands. Um, but, you know, let's be honest, I never learned how to even color inside the line, so cutting a straight line, you know, isn't, uh, isn't my strong suit. So I'm gonna toss in a tip, effective yet maybe kind of cheesy, but you may have used one of these to cut copper pipe, really cheap little tool that uh, can cut a copper pipe. Um, I'll take this. I don't actually use it to cut the insulation off or the shielding. However, you can use it to strike a really nice line all the way around. Tighten it up a little bit. Get yourself a nice straight line. And then you can proceed with your knife and follow that line. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a line there. It's nice and straight all the way around the perimeter. As far as the construction of the connector and sealing goes, this it does have a rubber seal that goes between the firewall and the feed-through. 
Uh, however, this is not a sealed connector like our DTHD series, that four gauge feed through we've got. Um, really good connector sealed. These are not a sealed type. So as you can see, you know, it's not exactly perfectly sealed. There's openings and stuff like that. The cable, you know, can be exposed. Uh, so keep that in mind, making your selection. If you're going to be driving through uh, big mud puddles all the time and half, you know, it's a swamp buggy or something, that's probably not the right application. However, just keep in mind what your, your battery cable going to your starter looks like. It's just hooked up on a lug like this and exposed. So if it's a race car, if it's a street car, um, you know, standard kind of type applications, you should be all right. But uh, keep in mind that it is not a perfectly sealed connector and, um, you know, depending on your application, uh, make a wise decision there. There is a paper template included to help you install it. It's on the website, you can download it. Very important before you go punching holes in your firewall, regardless if you get the template in the kit or download it, make sure it is scaled properly. That is the right size. You can take off the little rubber gasket and overlay it and make sure all the holes line up and then you have the right template for the job. That way you don't have a bad day and have a bunch of holes punched in your firewall that don't line up to anything. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email or check out the website. Also check us out on these social media platforms. Like, share, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it deserves. And thanks again for the support.